Hi gang, Rob here. It's the evening of 31 January 2016. I've got a From the Sharpening Bench video for you guys tonight. And this one is one that you have been requesting with great frequency. The knife we're looking at tonight is the new Cold Steel Swift. In case you didn't know the name of it, it's called the Swift. Lynn and the boys will not let us miss that, will they? It is, of course, by Cold Steel Knives, made in Taiwan with the new Blade Steel CTS XHP Carpenter Steel in that gorgeous, shimmering black DLC. I think it's probably a PVD coating, but we'll let it pass. Much better than the old Tough X coating paint that Cold Steel used to use. Pretty cool knife. What's special about it though? You know, new blade steel, we've seen that for a year now. A G10 handle, unlined, we've seen that for a year now in this uh, beautiful sandblasted 3D machine texture, just like the uh, Ultimate Hunter. Uh, a little different styling, but what else might be different? Well, how about this, boys and girls? Oh, what? What? Oh, it's spring assisted. You could say that it deploys swiftly. <laughs> Pretty cool knife, actually. Uh, before we get deep into the details, I've got a little video I wanted you to see because uh, I'm not sure anybody's shown this on YouTube as of the posting date of this video, but. Uh, as I was putting it back together after disassembly for cleaning and lubrication, I took some footage of the inside of the knife. Thought you'd like to see it. So take a look at, uh, at that and we will meet back here in a couple minutes. Okay guys, while well, we have the Swift apart for cleaning and lubrication, I thought I would show you, um, just as I'm about back together, the differences uh, between the spring assisted cold steel triad lock knife and the the normal triad lock knife that we're used to seeing uh, the major difference of course being this large uh, bright nickel plated spring rather elaborate it is both lock bar spring and spring assist it is attached to the aluminum backspacer with three t6 torx screws um, I would suggest you do not disassemble and reassemble this knife any more than you have to because as you remove these, this spring's under tension one direction or another. Um, unless you've been in one before and you know to sort of take the tension off or apply tension upwardly on this spring as you're taking the screws out, you're going to stress those aluminum threads. Um, so just be careful. Don't take this apart any more than you have to. We've seen these aluminum backspacers uh, strip threads on cold steel knives before just from disassembly. Um, not under pressure or load. So uh, that is a bit of a concern for me. So here's what it does. Um, one, two, three points of contact keep each spring, which there are two discrete springs and one uh, stamped piece of steel. So this spring is your lock bar spring. <laughs> Sorry for the twirling Torx driver. So you push this down, this pin presses against the spring and creates the tension to lock the knife. And then the other spring bears on this pin pressed into the blade tang and sort of kicks it not sure I really showed you that. Okay, so it's going to be hard to do because I don't want to let it fly open. But um, this end of the spring on this pin uh, supply the uh, assisting force. Because of this, we've gone to a very small phosphor bronze and Teflon washer set on the left side of the knife, a la... Uh, Kershaw with their uh, speed safe, 
spring assist. So we've got a, a washer at least twice this big on the other side and then the skinny one here which if you're a right hander the pressure you're going to apply is going to be on the big washer. If you're opening the knife left handed you're going to be applying pressure to the small washer which could, could give you problems over time. Uh, now before we go back together I want to show you a couple pictures of the two washers as I polish them. So take a look at those and then I'll explain. So as you can see during the polishing process, the, the washer we looked at was the large one, which is on the other side of the knife. Uh, the small washer polished up very nicely and it was flat. The, uh, the large washer on the other side, unlike really any other triad lock cold steel I've worked on, uh, that washer was bent and distorted and did not polish flat. Um, the knife, before I took it apart, did have some uh, centering issues and I'm not sure whether that washer being kind of messed up had anything to do with that or not. We'll see when we put it back together. Uh, but that's as polished as I'm going to make that washer because I, I don't want to sand away too much of it. Um, these washers are much thinner and of course this one's smaller in, uh, in diameter to other cold steel triad lock knives I've seen. So not quite the uh, the rock solidness in the bearing and suspension system that I'm used to seeing, for instance, on Recon Ones and American Lawman and other models like that. So, um, interesting mechanism, but I'm a little suspect of uh, how it affects the pivot. So, uh, I'm going to put it back together now, but I thought you'd like to see that and wonder what makes the cold steel swift tick and kick. I'd like to take a moment to welcome you to the Apostle P channel. If you are a regular viewer or subscriber, uh, thank you for your continued support. If you're a new viewer or someone who stumbled upon this video as the result of a Google search or other search engine looking for specific content about this particular issue or product, I thank you for being here and I'd invite you to subscribe to my channel. I upload about three to four videos a week. Uh, they could be knife videos, other gear related or firearms related videos and every once in a while we'll sprinkle in a little bit of Christ's gospel message. And also please like the video uh, with the thumbs up icon or dislike it if you dislike it. And I invite you to share it with your friends on Google Plus or Facebook or other social media. And I always look forward to hearing from you in the comments section. So thanks very much, and let's get on with the rest of the video. Okay, pretty neat, huh? With a couple areas of potential concern, but nicely done. A lot beefier assist mechanism than we're used to seeing, uh, certainly on the uh, Kershaw and Zero Tolerance knives. Um, and a little reminiscent of the torsion bar assist mechanism uh, on some CRKT knives of the last few years. I do want to mention this before we start dissecting this knife uh, in review form. I want to mention that after cleaning and lubrication, our centering issue, which you didn't see before, but it was significantly to the left as you're looking at the knife. Uh, it is back to perfect, even with those rather wonky washers, or at least one wonky washer. Okay, what do we got here, boys? We've got a spear point blade that is flat ground from about two-thirds of its height down. A big old swedge that gives us a, a narrow profile but a reinforced tip. The blade thickness is about 130 thousandths comes down to a decently thin dimension behind the edge. This secondary bevel is 16 degrees per side with a 19 degree micro bevel. Uh, let's look at our plunge grind. This is sort of in between good and bad. It's not quite Spyderco sharp or sharp like the Voyager series. I'm going to try to come in close to let you see this. The plunge 
is kind of at about a 45 degree angle. So you can't get that crisp straightness all the way to the back that you get, you know, for instance, on a paramilitary two or a sage. Um, but it's adequate to get straight. You just have to have nice sharp corners on your stones. Not bad, not like an American Lawman or a Recon 1 where you have to, you know, enlarge a, a painfully small choil to make it right. The handle, as we mentioned at the outset, is the unlined, thickish, 3D machine, satin finished and sandblasted black G10, which gives us this gorgeous, almost wood grain look uh, as the layers are revealed with the 3D machining. It just looks beautiful. It gives plenty adequate grip without having to put silly, uh, gross texturing. Gross By gross, I mean overly large and coarse. Um, so we have no pocket clip issues. This clip is a little, well, it appears to be a little longer than a normal cold steel clip, just from end to end, but functionally, it's still really short almost like a monkey edge clip and you do get two of these you notice they're they are not symmetrical so uh, you have two tip up clips one for right hand carry and then one for left hand carry that you can see the milled recess for the lefty clip these two screws must be uh, installed without the clip they are structural uh, great clip though uh, it does leave quite a bit of knife sticking out of your pocket but retention is good and ease of inserting and drawing are all there with no handle modification. Um, sad though, we have this beautifully applied wearing like iron or diamonds black coating on the blade. Big improvement, but on the clip and this knife is like a couple months old. <laughs> and I don't think my customer Scott is a real hard user. Uh, it's painted and it blows. Why couldn't we just use the same coating? I'd pay 10 bucks more. I really would. Don't know what I, I guess if I had one of these, I'd, I don't know. It's probably stainless steel, so it probably wouldn't take to gun bluing too well. I guess I'd keep painting it because it would look silly and satin. It'd be the only non-black thing on the knife. So kind of a hit for that, I think. Uh, let's talk about performance of the blade. Well, it's sort of an all-purpose blade, isn't it? This, the spear point, um, suitable, suitable for piercing, straight-ahead point, adequate slicer with a gradual-ish and fairly thin behind-the-edge profile of the blade. Can you choke up on it for fine work? Well, even though we don't really see a choil of any kind, sharpening choil, finger choil, or anything, we've got this swale in the spine of the blade with some jimping. And by the way, the jimping on the knife is for show only. Provides no grip, maybe a little bit of indexing. But look, I've got enough room between the point in the finger guard and where the edge starts at the end of the ricasso. I can lay my index finger in there without being in danger. And then, oh, yes, here comes the thumb right here in the swale. It, that actually works pretty well without having to do anything to the blade to make it so. So kind of cool. You don't really see what appears to be a forward finger choil, but you can sort of use it like one. Very interesting. So that saber grip, really good. The forward saber grip, really nice. Hammer grip, not a problem. A little bit of curve in the spine of that blade, but still a good hammer grip. What I really like about it, though, is how it presents the blade and the saber grip with that curvature. Just straight ahead for great piercing. Pretty cool. Draw cut grip. Not bad. Let's try this in my right hand so I can get a feel for where the clip is. Ring finger in the belly of the clip. So really good. And the point of the clip lies right between the ring and middle fingers. Not an issue at all in the hammer grip. And then if we want to go reverse grip, which you would probably do with this knife, I would classify this a medium-sized tactical knife at 4.8 ounces with a great lock and a blade that means business. 
the reverse grip very comfortable and it, you know here's kind of what I like about this knife it's uh if there's one complaint about cold steel triad lock knives is they're kind of clunky to open and close not all models but with at least half of them um, they require a little bit of effort and or technique um, this knife of course with its spring assist just needs a nudge to get going that's all it needs and it's going to drop freely with zero side to side play and the knife is free past 90 degrees so it will drop to there and the index finger hits the ricasso no problem no danger and then that gives you a, a nice place without reaching too far to go ahead and finish closing with your thumb just like you would any triad lock knife now what you can't do is take it to this point and flick it closed you know like I do with some of my knives but still that's an easy move just drop it and close it and opening is pretty darn cool nice knife um, really nice knife cold steel getting it right once again boys oh you think it cuts by the way after sharpening I always rave about how the CTS XHP sharpens up yeah, pretty good Hitting a moving target there. Nice and quiet when I get the blade right. Beautiful. Beautiful. I thought you guys would like to see that before it goes home. This wasn't the most expensive knife in this batch from Scott. Um, <laughs> I'm going to wipe before I leave you. I don't want to leave you with an image of a fingerprinted blade in your minds. There, that looks better. Yeah, that wasn't the most expensive knife in the shipment because that was this one. Oh my. Yeah, maybe not quite as cool as the brown and gold 392 from Zero Tolerance, but pretty cool for a whole lot less money. The Cold Steel Swift. Scotty, heading out to you on Monday, my friend. Enjoy. Grace to you and peace, my friends, from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And remember the word, and Scott's swift are sharp.